Don't be an idiom! A what? An established usage of grouped words whose meaning is not deducible from its individual units. Oh, why didn't you say so? But I did! Any hoozles, here's a collected catalog of primarily popular intelligent idioms. Pull yourself together and don't get bent out of shape while I wrap my head around it. If you're feeling under the weather, just pull the wool over your eyes. Sink your teeth into it when you bite the bullet, but don't bite off more than you can chew, although it's the best thing since sliced bread. Things tend to get out of hand when you twist an arm, break a leg, and knock him dead. I'd much rather sing my heart out than eat my heart out. When you put all your eggs in one basket, it cost an arm and a leg with a chip on my shoulder. I heard it on the grapevine that you cried over spilled milk. And did you know I go bananas for a piece of cake? Don't jump the gun at the drop of the hat. If you miss the boat, just cross that bridge when you get to it. To see the light, and a cloud has a silver lining. Better to be on the ball than off your rocker. If you steal my thunder and cut corners, I'll have a bone to pick with you. When the ball is in your court, kick the bucket. Hit the hay. Beat around the bush. And hit the nail on the head. Playing with full deck is not rocket science. Once in a blue moon, if you take candy from a baby, you're barking up the wrong tree. The whole nine yards is a dime a dozen. When you let the cat out of the bag, it starts raining cats and dogs. Killing two birds with one stone is the straw that broke the camel's back. Say that again. Does any of this ring a bell? Great morning to thee, this is Chaim G. And Eliezer G. He was your monumental and magnificently moving minute to majestically magnify our master and maker. Let's hit that clock below. And he means literally. One, two, three, go! go! Rav Abin, son of Rav Adia, quoting Rav Yitzchak, discusses the verses of how we know that Hashem wears tefillin or phylacteries. Wait, what? God puts little shiny black boxes on his arm and his head? And does Hashem even happen to have a head and hands? Many other times, the Torah too talks about the Almighty's might in anthropomorphisms. Anthropo what? Attributions of human characteristics to God. Oh, why didn't you say so? But I did. Any Does God have vocal cords to yell? An outstretched arm to cast a spell? Pupils and eyes to see well? And a nose with which to smell? An ear with which to hear? Two feet to walk down the street? Show anger when people clangor? And get jealous? The Torah does tell us. This famous question is asked by the Rambam, Maimonides, who gives us the answer that all physical attributes for spiritual essences are Lashon B'nai Adam, which most people incorrectly assume means human talk, so we can understand God a bit better. We make his parts an analogy for us. But it's prohibited by law to attribute any physical likeness to Hashem. So how does that help? Rabbi Akiva Tass teaches that Torah's idiomatic ideas are real. We must accept everything written as literal too. If it says it, it must be absolutely true. Ergo, God does have feet, hands, and eyes. Just we have no idea what that would mean, so God gave us feet, hands, and eyes so we could get some semblance of a sensible solution. We are the analogy to the Almighty. <sighs> Mind blown! Use everything in our lives to try to understand God better. That's been our show, now we've gotta go. Literally, we really gotta go. Get ready for Shabbos. Ah!